So here's a little bit of trigonometry. If we're given a right triangle, say it looks like this. So here's a right angle, and we know only two things about this triangle. We know that this hypotenuse is, has a length of 3, and we know that one of these two angles uh, is theta of 20 degrees. So we want to find this length and this length. So let's call this using Pythagoras' notation A and B and solve for A and B. So doing that, we're going to use cosine and sine trigonometric uh, functions of this 20 degrees. So sine of 20 degrees gives us this, this over this, so B over 3. So opposite over hypotenuse. So to solve for B, we multiple, multiply both sides by 3. So we have B is equal to 3 times sine of 20. And that gives us B is approximately equal to 3 times sine of 20, which is 0 0.342 approximately. So this means that B is approximately equal to 1.026. Great, so we've solved for B. Now we can do the exact same thing for A but that's going to be a cosine function. So let's do the same thing here. Cosine of 20 degrees is equal to A over 3, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can again multiply by 3, and we get A is equal to 3 cosine 20 degrees. So this is approximately equal to 3 times cosine of 20, which is 0 0.940. So A is approximately equal to 2.820. So here we found this height B and this length A. Here we want to do a simple conversion from degrees to radians. So for example, 45 degrees into radians. How do we do that? All we do is multiply by pi divided by 180 degrees. So to get this from degrees to radians, we say this times pi radians over 180 degrees. So 45 divided by 180 is 1 fourth. So we just have pi over 4 radians is equal to 45 degrees. So here we have a trigonometric uh, problem. We're going to have one triangle where we need to solve for the lengths of other sides. So if we're given a triangle that looks something like this, we don't really know all of the angles, but we're given a couple. We're given one angle is 30, 30 degrees here, and the opposite of that is length 2. We're also given that one of these angles is 40 degrees. So 40 degrees and 30 degrees. Now what we need to find is what is the length of the side that's opposite the 40 degrees? So that's our unknown. We'll call it x. And then we're just going to solve for that in whatever way we can. To do that, we're going to use the law of sines. So what that says is the sine of some angle in any triangle divided by the opposite side's length is equal for each set of those opposite length angles for each of the three sides here. So in other words, sine of 40 over x, sine of 40 degrees over x, is equal to sine of 30 over 2. So now we just need to go through here algebraically and solve for x. So we're going to multiply both sides by x, and then we're going to divide by sine 30 and multiply by 2. So then we'll just get x by itself. We'll have this over here. We've multiplied by 2 and divided by a sine of 30. So we have x is equal to 2 times sine of 40 degrees divided by sine of 30 degrees. This comes directly from the sine law, and we can just plug this into our calculators and solve. This just gives us x is equal to approximately 2.571. And there we have it. So for this triangle, we're given some information about it, and we want to find this length c. So we have an ABC triangle. We don't know all of the specs about the triangle. We're given this angle, 30 degrees, 
this side 16, and this side 12. So we've labeled it in the normal way where this angle, capital A, is opposite this length, lowercase a, etc. So we want to find length C. If we have capital C, angle, and we're looking for lowercase c, then we have to use the law of cosines instead of the law of sines, because that way we can actually solve for it, otherwise it wouldn't work out. So in this case, we want to use the law of cosines, which reads as follows. If we're talking about an angle that we know C, then we know that length C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of capital C. So we're going to just plug in what we know here and solve for C. So C squared is equal to 12 squared plus, sorry, B is 16 squared minus 2 times 12 times 16 times cosine of 30 degrees. We can work all this out and we get C is equal to, let's see, C squared we know still is approximately equal to 67.446. So C is then equal to the square root of that, which is approximately 8.21. So that is our final answer for the length C. Here we want to solve using the unit circle what sine of theta is if it's equal to 1. So we want to solve for theta. Actually, it's negative 1 in this case. So if we have sine of theta equals negative 1, using the unit circle, can we use that to determine which angle on here would give us a value of negative 1? So how we want to do that is to think about what sine is in the unit circle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always 1 in the unit circle, so otherwise we're just talking about the opposite side. When we talk about opposite side, we're talking about some triangle where we're talking about this side. So the height. So when we think of sine in the unit circle, we think of height. So in other words, what y value, what height, corresponds to a negative 1 value? Well, there's only two points where the value could be a magnitude of 1, this point and this point. And in this case, we're talking about negative 1, so we're going all the way around from 0, 90, 180, all the way to 270. So the only answer for this is theta is equal to 270 degrees. Theta is equal to 270. That's it. In this problem, we want to find a simple uh, angle given that tangent of that angel, angle, so tan of theta, is equal to 1 half or 0 0.5. And so we can just use our calculators to solve for this. So take the inverse tangent of both sides. So the inverse of this function is inverse tan. That will just give us theta by itself. And so theta of inverse tan of 0 0.5 gives us theta is about equal to 26.6 degrees. So right about here on our unit circle. So here we have a simple uh, trigonometric proof. So let's manipulate either side of the, of the uh, equation and see if we can get one side is equal to the other. So what we are given is 1 plus cosine 2 theta is equal to 2 cosine squared theta. Great. So what we're going to do is manipulate, say, the left-hand side until it's resembling the right-hand side. So we need to use a couple of truths here, a couple of identities, to change this around. So we can immediately change, uh, leave this one alone, actually, and then we'll say that cosine of 2 theta, we can just write that as cosine of theta plus theta. Great, so that's the same. Then what we can do here is use the law of additions, which says that this, so this is still 1, plus this can be written as cosine theta times cosine theta minus sine theta times sine theta, which is, of course, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So 1 plus cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So we have a sine squared theta here and not here. So let's replace this in favor of cosine given the identity, so this is just a side note here, given the identity that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. 
So we're going to replace this sine squared theta with cosine minus 1. So it's minus, so we're going to say minus cosine. Let's see, so this is minus. We have a minus here. We'll have cosine squared minus 1. So let's write this as 1 plus cosine squared theta. And then we have minus, here we have minus cosine, so plus cosine squared theta minus 1. So now we can simplify this. 1 minus 1 is 0. Cosine squared plus cosine squared gives us 2 cosine squared theta. Is that what we originally had up here? Yes, it is. 2 cosine squared theta. So we have something equals the exact same thing, and our proof is done. Check.